Here is the 2024 Toyota Corolla LE in Ruby Flare Pearl with the cloth interior. The LE is the base trim. When you're thinking about the different options, which one's gonna be the more sporty? Is it better than the rival? Some pros and cons. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and that's what we're gonna to touch bases on and the big problem that I have with the LE trim, starting with standard LED daytime runnings that integrate into the honeycomb portion of the grille that goes into the Toyota badging. The lower is going to have the enlarged grille with the horizontal bars. It's gonna look a little bit more understated, whereas the SE will boast more of a sporty profile. All of the trims will receive the same 2.0 liter inline four cylinder that produces 169 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque paired to a CVT transmission. The LE achieves 32 MPGs for the city and 41 MPGs for the highway. So when you're thinking the Honda Civic, this is gonna be sipping fuel. The difference though, is if you don't add a convenience package, you're getting hubcaps, a 16 inch steel wheel cover. You have to add the convenience package in order to get the actual rim instead of the hubcaps in which it will also give you a push button start. Whereas when you go into the Civic, they all have push button start. The lower skirt is gonna be more subtle, but even with this trim, it still looks a little bit more sporty than the Civic because they've grown up quite a bit. That's only leaving us with an Elantra, in which that's going to be a little bit longer than this, more wider of a profile, whereas this is a little bit more sleek. As for the Volkswagen Jetta, it also has grown up and it's a longer vehicle. It's a little bit more sporty than the Civic, but I like this one because it's kind of the smaller variant of all of them. The taillights will get the gloss black that's going to surround them. The lower is gonna keep it more subtle with one exhaust tip, but then the reflectors kind of make it look a little bit more athletic. The LE, you have to use the key fob or go inside to open the tailgate. It is a quick release once you do so, and it does sit up a little bit. You'll have a spare tire that's gonna be tucked underneath the floor, and you can split fold the rear bench, but you have to go inside and push these little buttons right here in order to do so. It's not gonna fold flat because these seats have a bit of a cushion now stand up. Six-way manual seat adjustment for the front driver. Four-way manual adjustment for the passenger. Headroom and legroom. The more sporty style is going to be in the Corolla. You'll have a two-tier dash. This is going to expand out pretty heavy, which it does so on the driver's side too. Satin aluminum for the air vents and it runs right behind that eight inch infotainment with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio with six speakers. The optional eight speaker JBL can go into the nightshade edition. Reverse, you don't have anything that expands out. Climate control, wireless charging pad is an option on the SE. Gloss black is going to surround the gear lever. We don't get any driver modes and this will not move forward or backwards. And when you open it up, you get a USB with a 12 volt. The steering wheel is a three spoke. It's multi-function, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, 4.2 information display that can go through an array of information, including different settings for the driver. The seven inch fully digital gauge cluster is on the XSE. The door panels and the dash can figure in together. And it's gonna be a little bit more sporty, even though it's a cloth upholstery. One touch up and down for the windows with a long storage pocket. No auto dimming rear view mirror or a moon roof. And no light so you can see yourself on the passenger side. For the back seats, headroom and leg room. No storage behind any of the front seats. USB ports, cup holders with a large armrest and the door is going to have the same materials found in the front except you only have kind of like a flask holder or an umbrella holder in the door. Sliding into the center, the rails are pushed up enough. You will be sharing some feet space, but leg and shoulder space, you will be sharing a little bit more so. Headroom, it's 
okay for somebody that's six foot three. 32 MPGs for the city and 41 MPGs for the highway. This is pretty impressive with 169 horsepower. Yes, it has a CVT transmission and it's not going to be the most sporty suspension because this is the base trim, but you're ticking the boxes for an everyday use vehicle. It's comfortable, it's gonna be a bit noisy. There's that power. And as you get up to a higher speed, the, the road noise filters in a lot more so. And even though we have a smaller wheel, you're not feeling too many of the imperfections. So it is actually okay. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting off with the pros for the LE. If you're getting your feet wet with the brand, you're in the 24, 25 grand pricing, which is not bad for an everyday vehicle getting these MPGs. Another pro is that they offer hybrids. They also offer a GR Corolla. So you have different choices in which you can go basic. You can get a little bit more sporty to the SE. You can get more sporty going to the GR or you can get the best MPGs going into the hybrid. So they're taking the box for a lot of variants all in one, which makes it a little bit more easy whenever you're optioning this particular vehicle. The biggest problem that I have with the Corolla is the back seats, because when you're comparing this to any of its competitors, it's going to be the least in class. And even in the front, the seats don't expand out much for your legs or your butt area. It's not so wide. So when you're going on a long journey, your knees are gonna be sitting up in the air and it's gonna be even worse in the back seats. Whereas when you go into Honda, a little bit more grown up, a little bit longer. The seats are also a little bit longer for the cushions. Same thing for Hyundai. This is going to be the smaller of all of the competition. Braking isn't bad. It's an everyday vehicle. And turn radius, it's pretty sharp. It's about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. The LE isn't gonna get any sport modes, but you get the B, which if you live up north or if you have a little bit of a incline like this and you're going down, you can use the B to help brake. So safety is also taken care of. Not a huge fan of the infotainment that comes out of the dash and the way the dash kind of pushes outwards. It would be nice if it was more flush, therefore giving a little bit more leg space to the front occupants, but it still would keep a sport style. More harder materials, more harder materials will also be found in the base trim which it's unfortunate but that's basically what's going to happen because this is the trim level that you're looking to get going up the tier will get a little bit more soft but in the center it will not slide forward you have to go up to the se so you'll still have to tick the box for higher trims in order to get some of the features that might make it a little bit more comfortable for a long journey but it's definitely one of the best in class for MPGs. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Ghetto Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Corolla LE for our car review.